and today I'm sharing my favorite SLR. It's the Nikon F2. The Nikon F2 was released in 1971, a fully redesigned successor to the popular Nikon F. F2s were widely adopted as the professional's SLR. Nikon kept the F mount from the previous model, which was great for people upgrading to the F2. The F2 is modular, accommodating various accessories and interchangeable prisms. This all-metal classic weighs 840 grams without a lens. Some of Nikon F2's key features include a film rewind crank, a shutter speed selector, a shutter button with locking collar, a film advance lever and a frame counter. On the front, there's a lens release button, a depth of field preview and mirror lock, and a self timer. Here you can see the shutter being released without a lens. First you wind the film advance lever forward, then you press the shutter button. The back of the camera features the film memo holder and the viewfinder, part of the prism which reflects the f-stop and shutter speed settings. The back door lock is on the underside of the camera. It opens the back door when twisted all the way. To load film into the F2, raise the film rewind knob on the top left of the camera, then place the film roll into the left slot with the pointed end of the canister pointing down. Push the film rewind knob back down. Pull the film leader across to the right side of the camera, sticking the end into one of the slots in the take-up spool. Make sure the teeth or sprockets grab the film by its perforations. Wind the film advance lever to ensure the film is being pulled to the camera. Shut the back door, Close the lock on the camera's underside. Advance the film until the frame counter reads zero and you're ready to shoot. This is my Nikon F2. It was gifted to me in my early 20s by a retired photography teacher who had switched to digital. I didn't start using the F2 until a few years later, when in 2017 I had the idea to get back in touch with the feeling I had shooting 16 and 35mm motion picture film in college. I had tried about 3 or 4 different SLRs by that point, and I loved that the F2 was the heaviest SLR I'd ever picked up. It felt powerful. I loved that it was a simple and fully manual camera, that I only needed to set the aperture and shutter speed. I didn't even realize my DP1 prism wasn't working as a meter until much later. That's why I learned to practice gauging exposure by eye with my F2. I may be a bit out of practice today, but I'm getting back into the swing of shooting around Montreal with this favorite camera of mine. Greetings photo friends, I'm Dan on Dan Crowder Photography and today I am sharing with you my favorite SLR 35mm film camera of all time. It's the Nikon F2. Now this bad boy is very robust. It was released in September of 1971 so it's over 50 years old now and it's still going strong. I've had mine CL about a year ago. Light seals completely replaced everything greased up and working well. Now this little camera is known to be a tank. It's been featured in films such as Jaws, Taxi Driver, and Under Fire. There are stories of this thing surviving incredibly dangerous falls that would have splattered and shattered other cameras, but this Nikon F2 is a tank. This particular F2 has a photo mic prism on top, which is couples with rabbit ears and adjusts uh, the readings according to the f-stop aperture ring on the lens. Today's lens for now is a Micro Nikkor 55mm 3.5. It's a beautiful portrait making lens. I want to spend a weekend with this camera and you and showing you why the Nikon F2 is a joy to shoot and my favorite SLR of all time. Here I'm loading up a roll of Portra 160 which I think will challenge me on this grey and overcast day.
To get my bearings, I've used a Siconic light meter, and it reads f9.5 for 160 speed film at shutter speed 1 1 80th of a second. I'm adapting that to be f11 at shutter speed 1 1 25th of a second for ISO 160 film. Had to go in for my favorite donut at Leche, so I took a shot of the sign there on uh, Rue Courcelle. Okay, sadly, Leche was out of donuts. It's almost 3 p.m., that's when they close. I'll have to come back later this weekend to find more. So, how does the F2 feel in my hand? Well, I use a wrist strap. And I find that more comfortable than wearing it around my neck because this little bad boy is a bit heavy. And you feel that after a while. But on my wrist, I'm perfectly comfortable. I grip it kind of with my index and middle finger and my thumb on the back. I can open the shutter advance lever and rest my thumb in it, but I don't like to do that. Not with this camera. It's just a bit heavy for that. And there's kind of a like reptile skin leather finish, fake leather, all around the body. So it feels good to grip it and it won't slip out of my hand. Some reasons I really like shooting with the F2 are that there are so few controls. There's just your shutter, your advanced lever, and your shutter speed dial. And you really have to give them some pressure to move them. There's no like accidental hits with this. So everything's like, I gotta grip it hard. It's a little heavy. Every shot I take is intentional. And uh, I'm not setting ISO. It's just, you have your film memo holder on the back. That's it. It just tells you what your settings are because it's coupled with the aperture dial on the F mount series lenses. Looking at the bottom, you see there's uh, space for a battery, but that's only if you have a certain prism with it. And at the bottom, there's a lock where it's either closed or it's open. That doesn't accidentally open up. There's a film release for the rewind as well. That's over there on the right side. So the F2 is a single lens reflex camera and like with so many SLRs you have to remember to use the focus preview button. That's uh, when you want to get the focus proper because when you don't you are just having the focus as it would be if the aperture were set to f3.5 or the widest of whatever lens you were using. So when you use the focus preview button you see the true focus, but your image will look darker through the viewfinder because you're seeing the true aperture and not the widest that your lens is, which is when you, what happens when you don't use the focus preview button. The viewfinder on the PhotoMic Prism is big and it's bright, and it only shows you the f-stop and shutter speed that you're using. It doesn't meter at all. It's just a little readout that through light goes through the top of it and you can see the little shape inside the viewfinder. I shot the REM train at 
F8 on shutter speed 1125. And then I switched it to F3.5 at shutter speed 1500. I just wanted to show the different shutter speeds you've got with the F2 because it goes from bulb and followed by one second all the way up to one two thousandth of a second, which I'm about to show you. This camera is fairly easy to load. I did it nearly with one hand. Uh, there's just such simplicity in this camera, even though as I believe the Nikon F was one of the first complete SLRs that was known as like the professionals SLR or the professionals camera. When I'm shooting with the F2, what I really appreciate along with the robustness is the reliability. Like the thing always fires. I never have a problem with the shutter. I never have a problem with lock up or anything. It's just a purely mechanical beast. And it always does what I needed to, when I needed to, especially since I had it CLA'd during the pandemic just completely tightly light sealed oiled up and all the mechanisms are timed to the right speed so my favorite camera got even better check out this huge cruise i'm in the old port of montreal That was a nice little Friday afternoon reacquaintance with the F2. I'll be back out tomorrow on Saturday and we'll swap out this micro Nikkor 55mm with a very classic and well-loved 105 Nikkor lens. So I'll see you again tomorrow. Good afternoon, good evening, good night. Alright, so today it's Saturday and I have got uh, Nikkor 105mm uh, f2.5 lens, which is so nice for portraits. I'm going to take it around in the plateau of Montreal today. We just got out at Sherbrooke Station and we're going to see what kind of photos we can get today with the Nikon f2. I may have just found the most Quebecois Porsche I've ever seen. I've captured two groups of birds there. Seagulls versus the ducks. I've met up with my friend Billy Stever of shutterlens.ca and he's out shooting with what camera you got today, Billy? I got the Yashica Lynx is a 5000E. It's a rangefinder. Compared to yours, very light. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure the, the actual weight of it, but uh, it's a fairly light camera. It's fairly small and uh, it has a fixed lens, uh, 40 millimeter, 45 millimeter. Even though they're both made of metal, uh, the Nikon is just way heavier. It's, it's like night and day, I guess because of the lens also, like being able to, to put on different lenses and whatnot. Um, this one is just so light, it's like, you know, if, if the lens wasn't protruding, you could just stick it in your pocket, like it's that light. Could you get the Nikon in your pocket? Uh, no, no, definitely not. We 
We're getting to the end of the roll of uh, Portra 160. We're in the old port of Montreal and I'm gonna take you around to see some of the boat show and finish off this roll in color. As I near the end of my roll of Portra 160, shot with this Nikon F2 on a Nikkor 105mm lens for today, my second day of shooting it in a row, I just come back to the conclusion that a simple, robust, heavy camera just feels so good in my hand, feels reliable, and I could have a Pentax K1000 that's completely mechanical, just like this but it doesn't feel as sturdy and I don't feel as confident with it in my hand. There's enough to grip here that I don't feel like it could slip out. There's flash and MX, an X uh, sync cable port for if I need to use flash with it. There's obviously no hot shoe, but I don't need that with this camera. I've got sync cables for, with which I can shoot flash with this camera and I've done it before and here are some examples. But the Nikon F2 is still my favorite camera to shoot. I don't have to think so much when I use it and when I'm looking through the viewfinder, I see the settings with my aperture and my shutter speed. It's just a breeze to use. I know it's reliable. It's been considered a professional's camera since it started. It's the finest Nikon in my collection. I love it. I want you to get your hands on it and try it out too. If you do have one, let me know what you think. and. I'll see you again soon with new cameras and new adventures. Things don't always go perfectly when I go on these adventures and make these videos. And when I took my role for development at Photo Saint Denis, I was going to get back roll 5796, but inside my package was roll 5781, and these were definitely not my nags. Bound to happen when I got same day service. So I went back and easily had my rolls switched back out. Here's a bit of my updated digitizing setup. I use my Nikon Z6 II mirrorless camera with a Nikkor MC50 2.8 lens, which is a macro lens that accommodates the ES2 film digitizing adapter. It comes with this six frame neg holder. I use an old phone on flight mode with the brightness turned all the way up. A little phone holder from the dollar store. I turn an app on that only has bright white light, set it up directly in front of my lens, take a white balance reading, measure the exposure, put my negs in there on the film holder. I focus on the grain, focus down as close as I can go, and then I take my picture and I have a negative ready to manipulate on the computer. Here's a bunch of specs on the photos that you saw throughout this video. Enjoy.